noticed if you ever log into uh, Twitter, as an example. So there's an extra delay that you don't know how long it's going to take. It's between two and three seconds, um, where that the number of new notifications on Twitter you have. So why is that there? Well, it makes that into a, what's called a variable schedule reward. It's like a slot machine. So you're playing the slot machine, and there's a time delay, and you're in that time delay, your anticipation is building, and then you get to see how many notifications I get. And so you become more addicted to checking it again the next time. It sounds like there's just a lot of sort of trickery going on here. I, I call it the race to the bottom of the brainstem. DTGO is reshaping the world, and this is going very, very fast. Today, wherever we go, we're inevitably surrounded by fellow citizens staring into their phones, as we usually are too. In the first 10 years of the 21st century, uh, the world was ex is experiencing an explosive growth of the internet age. Now, day two of Facebook's F8 conference in, is underway in San Jose, California. Now in day two, the social media behemoth revealed it's working on building a brain-computer interface that will let you type with just your mind. But if anybody can do three huge visionary future companies, I suppose it's Elon Musk. Look, he is great at making things that people don't think could ever happen, happen. And it sort of ties in with uh, some of the things we heard out of F8 this week, Henry, right? Right. Facebook. Questions of whether you can type with your mind. Facebook is talking about its own moonshots, and this is a direct brain interface, too. So obviously lots of folks out there are thinking about it. Facebook's example. So as... The AI scientists are, are building the, the tools, the machine learning tools. The world is starting to, um, to, to be filled with data. So quietly, these two things, along with the progress of computing, really started to converge in a way that um, most people didn't expect. If you lift the lid of a computer, you will see a circuit board into which a number. The problem is that there's so much data that has to be gathered and processed and sorted that there is not a computer system that's up to the task. And suddenly we find that we're entering into the age. Google now has launched what they call quantum computing. Scientists in China have built a supercomputer that's twice as powerful. Well, scientists in China say they have built the world's first machine that can compute many times faster than the current breed of supercomputers. Machines that take those ones and zeros to a level of computing power that has never existed. You heard the term game changer. How significant is this quantum computer development? In Towards a universal quantum computer. Very important milestone is that we're starting to emerge out of the research era to commercialization. In real people terms, how would this impact your life and my daily life? So that it does not simply take data and go through it and sort it. It looks at the entirety of the data and sorts it instantaneously. Well, there's a saying, um, finding a needle in the haystack. Uh, that is a very difficult thing to do. Let's try to simplify this a little bit. Imagine this room is a library, and we just take one book, and on just one page, we write an X. But with quantum computing, now you can actually isolate down to a specific sand particle out of all the sand in the world. That goes from just a few seconds to being instantaneous, faster than I can snap my fingers. But what if it was looking for that one X on that one page and it had to sort through every single book in the world? There are billions of them and it would take a computer of today centuries. Probably would be impossible. But a quantum computer, that's where things change completely because it goes through all of the books and all of the pages all at the same time and finds that X in seconds. This has a huge ability to enable the Internet of Things to become functional on a daily basis. Some brand new privacy problems thanks to technology, go figure, uh, something that you actually use every day could, again, be spying on your every move. Yeah. I have to say, Bose has not responded to this lawsuit yet, but the Connect 
app licensing agreement does say that it may collect your data. So that information is in there, but it does not specifically mention the collection of the audio files. So the devil really is in the details here. And that's why we find even like people like Google are using it to sort your information. The apps on your phone may be eavesdropping on you. A new article in Wired magazine claims that apps have increasingly incorporated ultrasonic tones to track consumers. Matt and I then logged into the email of a friend who will keep anonymous. And all his whereabouts so far in 2017 popped right up in scary detail. Not only was Matt able to guess a few things about this friend, he guessed right. I think the interesting thing here is that when you are listening to music, why do you listen to music through headphones? You think it's a private experience. Well, is it really that private now? We're not so sure anymore. In fact, this is already here. This is already happening. Internet giants are all infusing artificial intelligence in all their products and services. Snapchat uses this to improve advertisement targeting. Apple and its GPS functions, all their products and services are now being enhanced by AI. And it already seems normal to us. It already seems normal because our brain perfectly adapts to our current environment. And in fact, it adapts so well that it makes us blind in terms of how fast this is going. And to power this with a breakthrough innovation engine modeled after DARPA, products that recognize we are both mind and body, that our world is both digital and physical. You know that Google go even further. They want to make us live forever. They consider death as a disease. They want to make us live forever. This is just the beginning. What if you could type directly from your brain? It sounds impossible, but it's closer than you may realize. And it's just the kind of fluid human computer interface needed for AR. Every day, there is news coverage on the latest advances in AI. Understanding semantics means that one day you may be able to choose to share your thoughts independent of language. How would you characterize the level of concern the public should have with respect to their privacy? DEFCON 5. Then I think that, that, that we have very little privacy left. And I think that the sooner the people accept the fact that basically there's no privacy going forward, uh, the safer uh, the society will become. The sooner you realize that whatever you write in your email can be read by motivated others, the sooner that we all realize that being an atheist or being liberal or conservative is something that basically people will know about, well, they could probably very easily infer it now and definitely will just get easier in the future. But where we are going uh, today is, is uh, and I think the place where we're going to feel the greatest and most immediate impact is with money itself. America stands at a tipping point when it comes to giving up cash. A new study that shows Europe and the United States are getting closer than ever to going cashless. And while new technologies like contactless and mobile payments are slowly on the rise in the U.S., some economists think that we could see cashless societies emerge in this century. But for now, it seems Americans aren't quite ready to give up their cash. When we think about the ubiquitous nature of credit cards and debit cards and other banking forms, in fact, it has grown so much that uh, last year, Wells Fargo closed 84 branches. This year, they're going to close 200 bank branches. Hundreds of Wells Fargo branches are on the chopping block tonight. Wells Fargo announces plans to shut down more than 400 bank branches by the end of 2018. The company says the acceleration of closures comes as Americans seem to prefer online and mobile banking. An unmanned convenience store where customers can purchase items without cash or card has opened in Korea. Time to move on to our focus report, which takes us to India this Friday. This is the first unmanned biometrically accessible convenience store in Korea. Fingerprints and iris scans, but over a billion Indians have now received their cards. 
Aadhaar aims to provide an identification number to each of India's 1.3 billion people. It also records every individual's fingerprints and iris scans for the government's massive database. The world we are in is becoming more and more digital. We need new means to ensure this world is safe. Biometrics are key to that new digital world. The biometric recognition market utilizing fingerprints, veins, irises, and facial features is evolving rapidly. Your face is your access card at this security firm. And then there's the whole issue of biometrics, which has such promise to it. Okay, now put the fingers of your right hand. This is a revolution. I want to enroll my three-year-old daughter in school. They told me I can't do it without my Aadhaar card, so I desperately need it. The government has now made Aadhaar mandatory for availing subsidies on food and fuel, for opening bank accounts, and for getting a mobile phone connection. And it's something that only today is possible. In other words, a hundred years ago, fifty years ago. We looked at these prophecies 20 years ago. We looked at these prophecies and said, "Well, this could happen, that could happen, but we don't really know how it would be possible for the entire world to be tied into this economic system." And I think that everyone here, especially the class of 2016, understands that. You're about to graduate into a complex and borderless world. The reality is we have been in a one-world economy for a very, very long time. that there are uh, we are borderless on so many levels already